Hey, hey. What's happening? Yeah, for some fun in the sun. Check it out. Let's get in the water. We got seagulls, sandpipers, clams, and oysters. All here in the Ipswich Bay, Massachusetts. Let's go! sound? The sound of the waves crashing on shore? That's the sound of the past, where the waves were born, arriving in the present, with you and me in its path. Question, what do all guys and gals want? Well, surface anyway. It's an endless summer. It states that thousands of years ago, Polynesian fishermen would surf their boats up on the beach when they were done for the day. The great sea captain, James Cook, first noted in his log upon arriving in Hawaii, states that when the surf was up, almost all the locals stopped what they're doing and went surfing. The coolest dude out there was the king. He had a 22-foot balsa wood surfboard in which he had a bunch of dudes paddle it for him and he just stepped on and took it for a ride really nice. The first surfing in California was in the 1880s by three Hawaiian princes while at a boarding school in San Mateo. They went over the hills to Santa Cruz with redwood boards and surfing was born in the USA. Yeehaw! In 1902, George Freeth, the man who could walk on water, first surfed in Redondo Beach, Southern California. His statue in bronze still stands there today. Then in 1915, the great waterman, Duke Kamehameha, on his sugar pine surfboard, entertained the beach masses with his prowess in Southern California. After World War II, some local boys in Southern California started to play around with the new products, styrofoam and fiberglass. They shaped it, put a fin on the back, and modern day surfing was born. Thank you, dudes. But to me, the best surfing invention was the wetsuit. Some dude named Jack O'Neill got a hold of this newfangled product called neoprene and kept us from being blue in the water. Thank you very much, dude. And of course, lifestyle and fashion came along with surfing, and the industry went wild. Surfing took off in the 60s with the movies Gidget and Endless Summer, and the popularity of surfing went wild. That brings us today in Rye, New Hampshire, a local surf shop named Summer Sessions with Ryan and Ty McGill as owners. Hi, I'm Rick, up here at the surf shop with Ryan, owner of Summer Sessions. How you doing, man? I am doing fantastic. Great. Good to see you. Thanks for coming up. Great. I'm so excited to be here. Surfing is like one of the coolest things in the world. <laughs> Show everybody, all the little kids and all the adults who have a humdrum thing. Yeah. We've got to get them into the water, right? You got that right. So what's the most, what's the most fun thing you know about surfing? What do you like about it? I, it's just a different feeling every single day you go out it changes you know you go to basketball court and you shoot the same shot from the same spot a skate ramp you drop in the same way every day a wave is different so it's continually changing so for the rest of your life you're never gonna get the same thing it's always different so there's the passion at the start and passion till the end of your life I think you get that fear and the adrenaline rush don't you oh yeah going down something oh, yeah. big and not wanting to wipe out and hurt yourself yeah, yeah. that's the coolest part so tell me about your shop up here uh, my brother and I started this shop about 16 years ago. Started in college. Um, my mom helped us try and build it and, and, and organize it. You know, we had a college budget, so right. we made it work. Worked <laughs> our butts off for pennies those first years. Cool. And 
now we have a cafe and a juice spot and uh, we're right here on the beach at Genesis. And you have lessons? You got it. Yeah, we, the programming is really what gives you kind of that energy and stoke right. and that's really from our kids camp programming. It built from kids camp programming and then kids camp moved to mothers saying, hey, we want a night for us. And right. then we started a ladies night and we do adult night programs. and. So the activity-based stuff really gives you the energy and gets you excited because someone getting a wave for the first time and smiling ear to ear, yeah, it gets you, it makes you feel alive. Well, it's the coolest thing in the world. It's like falling in love with something else brand new. You got That's that right. That's the way I yeah. see it all the time. So it's wonderful. It's so also, you basically going to help us teach Abigail how to surf. Yep. She's really looking forward to that and I can't <laughs> wait to do all that. So it's kind of, it would be wonderful. Oh, for sure. We're excited. <laughs> all right. So this is one of the coolest things we've done this year and I can't wait to get started. Thanks for the interview. No and worries. We're ready to get on the beach. All right, sounds good. Cool. All right. If you want the quick story about some of the best nose riders, longboarding is one of my favorite things to do because I always say you can never have a bad time on a longboard. You can surf tiny waves, you can surf big waves. You don't put as much pressure on yourself. You're just out there to have a good time, and I think that's what re surfing's really supposed to be about. Some of the most classic longboards you can be riding, there's tons out there. Bing is one of them. Um, you know, this is your guy, Bing. You have Matt Calvani now shaping for Bing, but Bing and Jacobs has been around since the late 60s. I mean, they're a fantastic company amazing brand but you have all kinds of subtle details that you won't recognize until you've been out there a little bit to kind of to feel it um, you've got all the takiyamas this is one of the most recognized boards especially for donald takiyama he passed away last year um, the boards are still being made by a legend on the east coast ricky carroll based out of florida this is one of his most recognized this is the in the pink this is an insane board. You basically have full nose riding capability up on the front and then really pulled in tight in the tail. So you can really crank a turn and be performance based off the back and have all the ability to get up to the front and hang 10. It's a really cool board. Another classic from, Don, from Takayama is the NR2. And then you've got Kind of a different shape, an epoxy shape, a little bit lighter, easier to ride for folks who haven't been out as much. It doesn't have as much weight as some of the classics here. And other classics are all the boards that Ricky Carroll makes. He makes the Ricky Retro, he had the Justin Quintal, the Ricky Retro too. All oh, beautiful, look at that, that's resin tint right there. That's just coloring resin and pulling it down the board. The production of a surfboard, all hand-shaped boards, it's an art form, to say the least. It's spectacular. It's part of the love for surf. Left foot forward, and you're going to run and slide on the pavement. You go left foot, up down on the sand, cup it and throw it back, one after another. Hands like this, push up, push up on your body, and you're going to drive your left foot forward, and you're going to twist like that. One, two, three, four, push, left foot, and twist. Here you go, pretend there is a line going right down the middle of the board. You want your feet on either side of the middle of the line. Left, right, left, right. Push, left foot, and twist. There you go, you got it.
watching. Love you.